All right. Hi, Jess. Um, all right. So I guess we've, we're starting to get some people on online right now. So welcome to the next round of uh, live streams. Um, excited to, to be doing a series on this all. Um, so we are out in uh, the Vernal Wetlands on Stockton's campus. Well, there's many Vernal Wetlands on Stockton's campus. Some of them are a little bit more vernal than others. Um, a Vernal Wetland is is any um, any wetland that fills in predictably every spring and then dries up during the summer. Um, I was told that uh, they, they, the Pinelands Commission might prefer to call this an intermittent pond, and it is an intermittent pond because it, it is intermittent. It's, it, it only appears every once in a while. If you were to come out here in the middle of uh, fall and into winter, there would be no water here. It would be completely dry. Um, but then in the springtime when it starts raining, uh, you start to see all of this water gathering in, plants start growing, and it really is just this cool, cool place to be. And as it starts to fill in and as the, um, as the, uh, as the weather gets warmer and warmer and warmer, other things start to come to it, like frogs and salamanders. And they love it here because, guess what? Because it dries up, there's no fish that could eat their babies. And so there's no fish on, in this water because it, it gets dry. And so all of these frogs hop to the wetland and they start making tadpole babies or salamander babies. And they really do make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, an, uh, earlier, I think in probably late March or early April, we would see thousands and thousands of eggs from wood frogs and spring peepers all over the place. It really is just a, a magical place. And if you come out here at night uh, when they are looking for, for a mate, then all, I mean, it's ear shattering how, how loud it is. So welcome to all of those that are still signing on. We're out here at uh, Vernal Wetland on Stockton's campus. I've got my friend Susan Allen out here taking some photographs. She's going to help uh, help prevent me from dropping my uh, phone in the water. Still haven't gotten the way, so I should probably get on that if I'm going to do this. Um, so what we're going to do today is just first kind of look for some frogs and some tadpoles. They're definitely in here. I've, I've, we've seen them. Um, I almost fell in trying to catch one before. And then I'll just identify some of the plants. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the ecology of it. So without further ado, I'm going to um, walk on over to my friend Susan here, and she's going to hold, hold the camera while I embarrass myself trying to find frogs. So, uh, oh, thanks for the, I do that wrong. So, um, is it? Oh, it says you can't do that while you're live, so we'll be in oh, well, vertical. Oh, well. So, uh, this is my very scientific piece of equipment called a net. Um, actually, it is oddly expensive for being just a net, but we're going to use this to try and catch frogs. You don't really need to sneak, sneak up on them, they don't care. But the easiest way to find them is just kind of rake your net over the leaf litter. That's where they like to hide. And then what you get is a bunch of muck that you just kind of look through. Ooh. If, um, if you don't like getting dirty, you probably just want to watch and not do this for yourself. But if you like doing this kind of thing, um, get a net, any kind of net that'll work and go out to a wetland near you. Now, I'm not finding a whole lot of stuff. This is moss that's growing in the bottom of the wetland. You get a little bit of um, submerged vegetation, and I'll talk about all this leaf litter in a little bit. I'm actually not seeing a whole lot of tadpoles, to be honest, for, for what I would expect to see this time of year. This wetland is uh, a little shallow, so maybe there wasn't as much breeding this year. And the winter was also very, very warm, so um, that might affect how many tadpoles are in here as well. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. We didn't get anything, so we'll keep on searching. See? That's how you have to do it. You have to scream. It really didn't sneak up on anything, but you know, watch me get a frog. Man, not a lot. 
lot of stuff. They're in here. Maybe I'm just a bad frog catcher. I've got no business doing that. I'm not a certified frog catcher. Either it was a moving acorn or it was a tadpole. It could be one or the other. Lame. Oh. into PhD doing this. What's that? What's that? Something squirming. Oh, okay. So this is a dragonfly larvae. Um, let me rinse them off so you can see them a little bit better. This one's a small one. There we go. All right, can we zoom in on that at all? Don't, don't, don't try. I mean, just like, can, can yeah. you see it? All right, so this guy is a dragonfly larvae. Um, he's really small. This is, most people don't know, dragonflies, uh, they're babies before they grow wings and are, become adults. They actually spend their life in, in, in wetlands. Um, and this is uh, probably an Eschnidae or an Anax. Um, anyways, so this is a really common uh, finding in a lot of wetlands. You can see underside, it's not all that pretty. It doesn't have wings yet. It will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it will actually eat tadpoles when it gets big enough. And then it will start to grow wings on its backside, and um, it will um, fly away once it um, sheds that last exoskeleton. Uh, one really cool thing about dragonflies, if you uh, get a big one, and I don't know that we're going to be able to get a big one, but if you get a big one, or if you just YouTube video uh, uh, of a dragonfly eating, they have this mouth that it's like a spoon and it's on the underside of their face. And then when they see a tadpole, they do this. Like that. Really, really fast. It's one of the fastest movements in the animal kingdom. I'm gonna put this guy back and see what else we got. And the peeper adults, you can always tell because the peepers are brown, usually with a kind of a blackish X on their back. Sometimes it's not quite an X. All right, let's see what we got now. Something to see, it's very clear that there's a lot more green stuff in the middle of the wetland. And I think that you might be able to figure out why there is so much green stuff in the middle of the wetland. Because if you take a look at the wetland, that's where the sun is. On the edges of the wetland, all of the trees are shading things and so there's no sun. So you don't get a lot of vegetation like this stuff growing on the wetland, growing on the edges of the wetland. So you often get different organisms, you get different uh, species that like to hang out on the shores of this wetland versus the center of the wetland. Let's see what we got. I mean, I have to admit, for aquatic stuff, there's not a lot of organisms in Pine Barrens systems because the water is kind of acidic. You go outside of the Pine Barrens and you can get all kinds of cool stuff like isopods and amphipods and snails. And got here. Something was squirming. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I'm gonna start a GoFundMe 
to fund me getting like a, a gimbal or something. And I'll start off with if anybody wants to throw me 10 bucks, I'll wear this as hair. Just kidding. I'm all right, all right, all right. So I'll take that. And My high school freshman is loving this. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Sh shut off the camera for a second. I don't know how that happened. All right. So, good to see that we have about 20 people on. Stacy Kolb. I don't know if you're talking about the inner high school freshman in you or your own high school freshman. Both, I hope, are good. So, let's, um, let's take a venture out into the middle of the wetlands here. Just take you out directly into the water. I am in chest waders because you know it's attractive. So if you take a look, you can see all this vegetation, a bunch of grasses and mosses growing. Usually, you can find some frogs hanging out on the sides of the wetland. Um, I'm not seeing any. I think we've disturbed them too much. I'll give the net a few more times to try to find some. So, while well, you know, the best thing to do if you're looking for for wildlife is just to be quiet and not disturb them for a little bit, um, and then they'll they'll show themselves. They're just afraid um, right now. So let's talk a little bit about um, let's talk a little bit about the ecology of vernal wetlands here. So, like I said, these things fill in every single um, spring, and they usually dry out at the end of summer. And um, so, these wetlands don't start with anything other than leaf litter. Only leaf litter. Only all of this stuff that's on the ground, this stuff that I'm going to pull out for you guys, you can see most of this is just leaf litter from trees all around this wetland. Well, that's what all of these tadpoles are eating, guys. Tadpoles eat leaf litter. They eat the bacteria and the fungi off of leaf litter. They graze it, and eventually they fragment it up. And so all of these trees throughout this wetland, throughout this forest, because this wetland is at the lowest point, all of these trees shed their leaves in autumn, and those leaves blow by wind to the lowest point, which is this wetland right here. And because there's so many leaves in this wetland, those leaves are the food for tadpoles. The tadpoles eat those leaves, and then they grow legs, they emerge as frogs, and they hop back out into the forest where they go and they find trees and they sit underneath of trees and they find bugs to eat. And guess what? They also take poops. They take poops and those poops then decompose on the ground and those poops send nutrients back into the trees to grow more leaves that then fall in the autumn and they go back into the wetland. That's the story of vernal wetlands, guys. It just is constantly sending nutrients back and forth, back and forth. Now, I'm going to give the wetland just a little bit more time to kind of chill so that maybe we can catch some frogs. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. I want to show you guys. Thanks, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie says, I'm surprised you took these this long to talk about leaf litter. Well, we change. Anyways, so um, I'll show you this. This is one of my class's wetlands again. Um, if you tuned in last week, I told, showed you um, some islands on the middle of Lake Fred that we built for class. Those islands were terrestrial land islands for um, plants and insects. These wetlands right here are aquatic islands for this vernal wetland. 
I know, I know, I know. Most wetland, most uh, most of the time that we talk about islands, we don't think about um, water as being the island. We think about land as being the island. But when you think about it, an island is anything that is surrounded by an area of inhospitable habitat. So, this wetland right here is an island for tadpoles. How do tadpoles get here? Well, maybe a frog breeds in here. And we have several islands set up. Adrian, I don't know how you got that emoji, but I need it for class. We have several islands set up here, looking to see just the same thing that we did with our islands in the middle of Lake Fred, is if farther islands will get more or less tadpoles. Now, I have to tell you, I don't think there's any tadpoles in here. I really do think we had a weird uh, winter and we didn't get a whole lot of, we didn't get a whole lot of uh, breeding happening, which is okay. You can have some years without a whole lot of breeding and other years with a lot. Nature is variable and cyclic and that's why I love studying it because there's always something new to study. see what we can find. Well, there's a beetle. Let me see if I can get the diving beetle for you guys. So this is a diving beetle. Diving beetles can fly, but they like to dive, as their name uh, implies, they like to dive into water, and they will eat small tadpoles. They'll also eat plankton. I know it looks very shiny, but those are the, um, they call them the elytra, that's a sciency word, the elytra surrounding their wings. All right, well, I don't see too much in here. Oh, you know what? While I'm out here, I'll show you some other cool sciency piece of equipment. So, some researchers at Stockton University wanted to see how far frogs travel and when they travel. And so they built this thing called a drift fence. Now, during the spring, when the frogs are going to breed, all of the frogs travel from the trees that they were hanging out underneath of taking poops. They hang out from underneath, they come out from those trees, and they hop to the wetland, which is over here. These drift fences, these, these, these plastic fences that we set up, stop the frogs. So they go hop, 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 and they hit the, the, this black tarp here, this black... Uh, fence and they're like oh no I can't get across how am I supposed to get to the wetland so they start going this way or they start going this way but then in the middle of breeding season what researchers can do is we put these very scientific pieces of equipment into the ground called buckets these buckets are dug into the ground so that's a full bucket but as you can see it's at ground level all right and the frog hops, 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 and then, oh, it fell into the bucket. And it can't get out because it can't hop that high. And then we come out at night, and we look to find if there's any frogs in there. If there are, we take them, we measure them, and then we put them on the other side of the bucket, and they hop around the fence, and they go to their wetland. Really, really sciencey stuff. Just kidding. Well, it is sciencey, but... You don't need a million dollars to do that. I'm going to put this lid back on because I don't want anything to accidentally hop in. Because guess what, guys? I'm not going to be here tomorrow to check it out. I only come to campus once a week right now because, you know, pandemic. Although, I got to tell you, if you want to social distance yourself, just come out to the woods. There's nobody here. All right, let's go back to the wetlands here. You also want to know a secret how not to get any ticks on you? In the middle of Tick Central, wear chest waders. Nothing can get past this Kevlar vest, including sweat. It's very gross in here. On a hot day, these these waders don't breathe. Feels like I feel, feels like I'm, I'm I'm leaking sweat. So you can also see 
You can also see all of all of this this vegetation growing, blueberry and and a whole bunch of other stuff coming up. This is spring, going into summer. This forest is going to be pure green in a little bit. Back to our wetland. So I did just learn that we have a gimbal on campus and I'm going to be able to attach my phone to it so the, the images aren't going to be so jerky next time. I didn't want to take the gimbal to a wetland though. It's kind of expensive. All right, I'm going to go back around. Oh, we've got a camera trap. So this is Dr. Catherine Tredick's camera trap. We're going to take a picture of the camera trap taking a picture of us. Say hi. So uh, Dr. Tredick is our wildlife biologist, our wildlife manager on campus. She studied bears and squirrels, and she takes students out trapping. It's a lot of fun. Um, so because wetlands are sort of these hot spots for vegetation, um, like all of this moss. Deer and other animals love to come here to take a drink of water. Um, and you get, a lot of, um, you get a lot of wildlife coming through here. So she has a wildlife camera set up. Oh, I saw a frog moving. All right, guys. I'm going to set the camera down on a tree while I go looking for frogs here. Sup. Just tadpoles. Just tadpoles. You're not going to find a lot of frogs right now because they already did their business. They already done breeding. The only frogs that are here right now are those that are taking a bath and those that are too dumb to figure out that the time is done. Alright, let's say we go around that side, see if we can't find any frogs. Give this one last go and then we'll we'll call it. Trust me, I'll find frogs on another day. Maybe we'll do a night version of this. I just heard one. Yeah, I heard one too. They're in there. They always give a warning when they jump in.
this, this right here, this is a frog biologist that hasn't caught any frogs. This is also a pathetic human being. Looks like you've got close to 30 people showing up. So I'm just looking for frogs. They're very skittish. They're here. I see an occasional ripple in the water telling me that they're here. But um, it's a little bit difficult to find them. I know. We'll come out at night. Maybe we'll do a um, we'll do a carpenter frog, a carpenter, a carpenter frog, um, or a Fowler's toad episode. Oh, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. It's a cute little squeak. Lindsay, this isn't reliving your undergraduate days. You'd have to fall in and get yourself all muddy in order to be reliving those undergraduate days. Well, well, I think we have sufficiently scared the entire population of frogs that are at this pond right now. Unless that's one. One-handed netting. They don't let you do that until you pass Hogwarts level 5. All right, before we sign off, one last shot. We'll try to go all bare grills on this tadpole thing and see if I can't get anything. Okay, that was not as epic as I thought, and it's also gross. Now I need a shower. All right, guys, catch you later.